Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal in our weekly segment with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian. I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So we're just a few weeks into the new year. And Franklin, what is the new year bringing us in terms of news? Well, what we're having is, um, well, the first thing we should talk about is a special town meeting that we're going to be having uh, on January 30th. And the only article on that uh, on the agenda will be uh, the appointed versus uh, elected treasurer. So Franklin, this is an unusual time of year for, for a special town meeting. T t tell us Tell us what the reason for this is. Well, it's a uh, part of uh, what uh, the uh, select board is, would like to do, and that is uh, uh, centralize the financials, uh, the financial workings of the town. Right now, we're because of uh, in the Collins Center report, the now famous Collins Center report from last year, it said that Belmont was one of the most decentralized uh, communities in terms of um, you know budgets and and how you how you tackle finances. And what that does is it really you you can't coordinate effectively how to do your finances when you're in a situation like Belmont where, you know, you're, you're you have a structural deficit. So, so this is this is one of the first things that they asked that they asked the town to do, and that is, you know, uh, make uh, instead of having an elected uh, town <clears throat> treasurer who you know has his own power base, he or she has his own power base, um, to have them part of. Um, a, a greater um, <clears throat> financial team, basically. So, Franklin, I do want to ask you. So, so um, why do a special town meeting now? Why not just have this article before town meeting in the spring? It has everything to do with how you how how this how this will work. Okay. Uh, basically, you have to um, you have to get town meetings approval uh, for an appointed um, uh, uh, an appointed. Um, treasurer all right and after that it then goes before the voters so it's a two-part process the town meeting will, will will send that question to uh the uh town election on the 4th of april and then the the, uh, the residents will vote on whether to go forward with an appointed uh, treasurer so um there there was a public forum this past week um on this issue um tell us Tell us what some of the sentiments expressed there were. Well, I, I think it was uh, it was very interesting in, in terms of uh, what people were, uh, you know, how people were lining up on one side of the uh, uh, question or the other. Uh, I think the people who were for an appointed board just sees it as, you know, as the select board who is supporting this. They see it as just a uh, just modernizing, you know, Belmont's uh, 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 financial team. Um, you know, the number of uh, towns that are uh, going with an elected uh, an official is uh, is falling. Um, and it's because, you know, when you have an appointed uh, treasurer, you can have a bigger pool. You know, you don't have to just go within the town. You know, we've been very lucky with Floyd Carmen, you know, back, uh, you know, almost 20 years ago, 18 years ago, you know, he was elected and he turned out to be a brilliant uh, treasurer. Uh, and it's but important how, to note that he is retiring. And he, he is retiring. And uh, the thing is, is that, uh, how many times do you get a, a Floyd Carmen? You know, you could have somebody who's not as adept, not as technically, you know, uh, responsible. We may not, you know, you may go into a town and have a lot of smart people, but who, want, who wants the job, you know? So, so some of the residents who attended the public forum um, questioned the move to an appointed <clears throat> town treasurer. And what, what are they saying? But basically, this was the interesting point. It was, it was less, I think, uh, whether to go for an appointed to a, uh, an elected uh, official, but it was who is going to do the appointing, and that is the uh, town administrator. It's not going to be the select board who who uh, who appoints the uh, treasurer. It will be um, the, the, because of a uh, because of a bylaw that we passed a few years ago. It is going to be the town administrator, and that is uh, Patrice Garvin. And, and when you heard the sentiments of many of the people who were opposed to the um, appointed uh, treasurer, it was it was almost equally that they were just. They didn't want Patrice to have more power, basically. They, they, they're seeing it as a power grab. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> it seems to be um, just uh, uh, there is a group of people in town who uh, just, uh, I guess, Patrice rubs the wrong way. And they uh, and they just have been continually um, going out and, and saying that this is, you know, why do you, you know, we should have the select board uh, control the treasurer. when. But when they when it really is something where the treasurer is going to be independent anyway, you know, it's but he's going to, that person will be appointed by the by the town administrator. 
uh, you know, the town administrator appoints a lot of people, like, uh, yeah, you know, all the way from, you know, the facilities director to, you know, HR and, and people like that. She does a lot of appointing why this would be any different. Uh, have have uh, many people question that. And uh, there's always been a suggestion that there's a bit of sexism involved with this. All right. Well, so th there there is a there there is a special town meeting. It's on January 30th. Monday, and, January 30th. And town meeting will decide uh, how we're going forward with this. That's correct. All right, so next up, Franklin, what are things looking like for the next town budget, the fiscal 24 town budget? Uh, pretty bad. <laughs> um, I think everybody, there was a uh, public meeting, uh, there was a public meeting, there was a joint meeting of uh, the select board, the school committee, the warrant committee, and I believe there was another committee in there. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they, they got uh, basically what the financial task, uh, what the financial committee, I should say, um, is uh, they were presenting uh, four um, uh, public meetings on the, on the budget, uh, on the, uh, I should say, the fiscal year 24 budget, which will go into effect in July. And uh, it was um, uh, more, uh, not so much sobering news as um, unnerving. Um, right now, um, the uh, budget deficit for the town and the schools are, you know, upwards to you know, what is it, eight, you know, almost $8 million. The structural deficit. The structural deficit. And, uh, and uh, you know, it appears that uh, there are three recommendations that, is, that are coming from uh, the, the town administrator and also every, and, and, the, and this financial, um, uh, the, the uh, financial director. Um, and uh, right now they're going to be basically drawing down free cash. Um, and uh, that's because, the schools, even after getting all, you know, after after uh, as much money could be put into the schools, it was st the schools were still down uh, six point one million dollars, and uh, you know how, you can't really make cuts of six one point one million dollars without devastating uh, the schools, especially with this new, with especially with the new middle school coming on board in September. So what happened is that uh, the uh, town administrator would give they basically were drawing down uh, free cash to almost zero which is a kind of a stunning thing to think about. Um, uh, but, but drawing down free cash to zero by allocating another 3.6 3. 6 million to, to unspent capitalization funds. That's right. And they, they wanted to do it into the capitalization fund because as uh, Patrice Garvin, our town administrator, said, it'd be more, you, it, you have to be more disciplined in spending that money. You know, in free cash, uh, what we usually do is that the town town meeting can pass and, you know, can use free cash by a majority vote, right. or 50% plus one. When they're in stabilization funds, they need a two thirds vote. So town meeting will have to really back some of these new uh, initiatives when they, when they, when we put free cash mostly into these two stabilization funds. Now for the, the sake of disclosure, I am on the school committee and while um, reductions have been proposed. Um, there has been no decision on reductions as of yet. That's right. I mean, there there have been talks. There are there's suggestions. There are recommendations. But right now, we're going to have to wait till to the. I guess it's the first week in February when uh, February so 9th. February 9th is going to be the big day when uh, we have it. I won't say finalized budget, but it is a more firm budget, and there, that's when the recommendations will be going forward from the schools and from uh, the town in terms of where the money's going, how much money's gonna be spent, and uh, so should, people should uh, think about this. One final thing is that while, we're, while we'll get through the 24 budget, and I'm pretty sure that we will, uh, with, uh, you know, still cuts to the, to the schools. I think, you know, um, Meg Moriarty, who's the school committee chair said, you know, we understand, you know, we, we've got our marching orders, that we're gonna be moving forward with that. I think there's a lot of people who are, who are um, um, you know, and we will go through the 24 budget. The 25 and 26 budget, <laughs> we're, we're looking at 13 and 15 million dollar deficit you need an override and i think uh, that's what patrice patrice garvin has said it's unavoidable so franklin um some people are saying that that perhaps we ought to be thinking about an override this year that's right and i think uh, especially people who are uh, supporters of the schools and they're saying you know why are you know even though you know you're looking at 2.1 million dollars and it can be done but it's going to be it's going to be hard, you know. It's a, you're looking at uh, FTEs and um, uh, you know, um, which are you know personnel and uh, maybe programs being ended. So they're saying why why do this on the back of um, why go into a, a, a basically a uh, uh, 
an override year on the backs of the schools. So you you know there uh, somebody uh, uh, one of the school committee members suggested maybe we're having a uh, special town meeting in November um, and uh, have a special election basically for an override in November so we don't have those massive cuts um, to the schools and and I think there's some support of that on the select board. But, but this is way too early still. I think what we're really going to have to wait for is the February 9th meeting, and that's when we'll, we'll see everything kind of cool, you know, everything uh, sort of uh, play out. All right. Thank you, Frank, and we'll, we'll stay tuned on that one. Um, and next up, um, there is a proposal for bringing... A very, very rough, very rough uh, draft oh, a rough, right now. A rough draft proposal to, to bring disc golf... To Belmont. That's right. It, uh, you know, uh, Brendan Fitz, uh, our recreation uh, director. He's uh, he's always thinking of, of these great ideas. He's he's always uh, moving forward in terms of uh, trying to bring recreation to the town. And uh, somebody suggested, uh, you know, that uh, Rock Meadow, uh, the, which is along Mill Street near, near McLean Hospital, um, that would be a great place for uh, some disc golf. And if you don't know disc golf, just go to YouTube, put disc golf, and you see that. Uh, it's very popular. Um, uh, funny enough, it's uh, it's it's like uh, while well, the United States has the most disc golf courses, Finland, Estonia, Poland, they all love disc golf. Of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> why not? Yeah, I mean, and, and why not Belmont? Right? Why not Belmont? Because you know, in fact, disc golf is is has you know within the one twenty eight area, the mm-hmm. one twenty eight. There's only three uh, uh, disc golf courses. Uh, one's at Peabody, two's in Boston. Uh, and when Brendan Fitz brought, uh, like, the experts in disc golf, they, they came and they raved about uh, Rock Meadow. They thought it was like this would be one of the premier courses in the country. They would bring tournaments here. Uh, well, so, so, but that raises an interesting question, Franklin, and that's, that's you know, how, how would, how, how would, how would conservationists view? Well, but, you know, there's always that point, you know, you know, you try to, you know, you look at um, uh, Rock Meadow, and right now there's a lot more activity that's going on there. There are dogs, you know, everywhere. You know, you can bring your dog there. There's a there's a public garden, um, uh, not a public garden, but gardeners are mm-hmm. there. Um, uh, and and we have cross country meets now in in, in um, September and October there, and they've been very successful. And people do want to get out, so. Why not, uh, you know, uh, there and, and disc golf is one of the four fastest uh, growing sports, you know, in, in the country. And uh, along with pickleball, <laughs> along with pickleball that's and, and other, and other uh, new sports. But um, it, it, it's something to think about, you know, should we should we start using uh, these open spaces uh, for uh, passive uh, recreation? Well, this wouldn't be this would be kind of passive. I mean, it's throwing Frisbee into a net, basically. So so it's a draft proposal. What What's up next in terms of decision making? Oh, well, it has to go before the Conservation Commission. It has to, you know, there has, you know, it doesn't cost that much. It would cost maybe, you know, between, you know, um, between fifteen and $10,000 um, to put basically, you know, little disc um, golf holes, as they call them. Okay. You know, and, and you play it like a, like a golf course. You know, you, you do have to buy, you know, expensive frisbees to play it but other than that it's uh it seems like a you know and and, and congratulations to uh, brendan fitz you know he's thinking about you know putting more recreation out there which is a good thing that is a good thing all right well thank you franklin and if you'd like to see more of franklin's reporting please visit belmontonian.com and be sure to stay tuned and check in with us next time and we'll see you then